are on blue side for the remainder of this best of five. They know the Dr. Mundo ban worked very well. They've been banning Katarina this entire time. MYM would have to kind of just like let more through, maybe let Lucian through and push Forgiven off of Caitlyn, even though the popular opinion is that Lucian is just way stronger than Caitlyn. It's just, it's so hard for these guys to adjust. They ended up banning Annie this time, who they played in the last game, and maybe that's because Libic isn't super comfortable on it. Well, that does mean well, that Renekton is available if Youngbug wants to take it. It is his champion, but it's going to be a yeah. Lucian pick to picked up for Forgiven. And Forgiven, honestly, has come in this with giant boots to fill from Reckless. But the Greek player, and honestly, they could well be the first Greek player in the LCS, mm -hmm. obviously being backed by the millions back at home, he has played fantastic. And giving him Lucian is not, like, a great idea. He had a pentakill on Lucian yeah. in the qualifier just to get here a week ago. Yes, it gives MIM a few things back because they were able to get the Shivana and the Lee Sin, and the Shivana was very successful for Young Buck. But Young Buck can still pick his favorite champion in Renekton. Well, some fast picks coming through here. Let's go through them. We see Shivana and Lee Sin, like you mentioned, already picked them. So we'll see how McCanna does on Lee Sin this time around. Zyra and Ziggs. So Ziggs taken away mm -hmm. from Mio Maker's Chari this time around, but Siva and uh, Thresh being picked up. So lots of changes in this game around, and there is the Renekton for Young Buck. Yeah, and I think Sivir is a fantastic pick with Shivana for Meteor Makers. If they can escape the laning phase against Forgiven, who's just been obliterating people so far in the early game, the move speed that Sivir adds to Shivana makes her extremely effective in team fights to get people with that burnout. And it's a complete adjustment for the Wolves as well. Mm -hmm. And now we do see also another mid laner being Way picked up. This teams. time around, Oriana being selected. So both teams completely shaking up their rosters and seeing how they can make this one play out with new champions. And this was mainly forced by MYM. The fact that they changed up their bands and went with Annie and Caitlyn just completely changed the way all the chips fell on the table here. And I like the fact that MIM changed up so drastically. You can see right now, they don't have any champions that they had on their team last game. They picked Thresh in game one, but aside from that, they're playing a completely new ball game against Copenhagen Wolves. And in fact, you know, the fact that they've taken the Shivana and the Lee Sin away from Copenhagen, Copenhagen Wolves, they forced Copenhagen Wolves onto new things as well. So this is that adaptation we were hoping MYM was going to be able to make because they did not adapt well throughout the LCS season. They're trying to do it right now in game three. So with us, this team's completely adjusted. Let's let's take stock of what we got. Mm -hmm. We've now got area effect. We got Youngbook on his favorite champion by a long way. Yes. It's the Renekton that he's renowned for. We now see Vi once again. Vi was pretty much the, the jungler of choice, effectively, coming out of the World Finals. He was he was the champion that went in there along with Aatrox as well. So mm -hmm. a lot of old champions coming out. Ziggs, of course, we've seen Charo on that a couple of times already. Lucian and Zyra, well, we know what we're going to get from that. So strong choices from Copenhagen Wolves once again. And this time, I think Copenhagen Wolves is going to look to be even more dominant in the laning phase. And unless Lee Sin on MYM's side can shut down that laning phase, we could see a repeat of that last matchup. Absolutely. So meet your makers. Can they turn things in their favor this time around as the red team? Didn't work out last match. Of course, mm -hmm. they are tied at 1-1, but they did pick up game one. And for me, the important things to note is how well they do in the early game. It's so incredibly critical because, you know, the first game, we can kind of throw that one out. That mm -hmm. was everyone being a little chaotic. They definitely weren't playing up to par. They're getting their used to the season right here. Last game was much more crisp. And last game of the early game definitely had a heavier impact to swing through the rest of the game. Well, we are about to get things underway here in Cologne in our brand new studios. As you can see, it's all fancy now. It's all set up with the internet. It's effectively the Gamescom. If you anyone have attended Gamescom, you'll know what the stage is like. It's a pretty much adapted version of that. And these players, you know, it's giving them a giant platform to play on. And the pressure on both these teams now. Copenhagen Wolves played at Gamescom. They will be prepared on this stage. Mio Maker's the biggest they've been at, I guess you could say, is probably Lille when they went on there on the stop. Yeah, and it's really funny how the LCS team doesn't have as much experience on this exact stage that Copenhagen, Copenhagen Wolves has had. It's going to have to be their overall experience that carries them through if they want to find an edge that way. Well. We see Makata taking that kick, landing it on Youngbook. 
Just forcing them and giving their position. It is a game, Meet Your Makers, being the aggressor at level one. It's something they were renowned for back in the Go For Lols, EU Nordic East challenges when they were sat there a long time ago, back when they managed to get themselves through to the WCG 2011, where they got mm -hmm. second place. That is how long this team has been together. Yeah, they are the longest standing team yeah. in League of Legends. I was playing in that tournament. You were playing in that tournament. That's how long it was, Jet. These guys have been around for a really long time. I am not. That was a the pro game you and me anymore. first cast together. So you know that was a. That That's was a, right. There was a lot that happened at that tournament. The good old days. <laughs> the good old <laughs> days. So nothing really coming from level one. No surprises. Everybody's going to be caution, 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 cautious and passive. And of course, this time around, though, I'm excited to see how Makla does on Siva. Siva, the champion that everybody's been calling out, everybody exactly. has been banning and mm -hmm. hyping up so massively that it's it's almost calling for possibly attention from Riot. Well, that's definitely happening. 3:15 patch it ship happened. today. <laughs> Siva's nerfed. This is the last last hurrah for Siva. <laughs> Maybe not. It's not supposed to be nerfed to a point where it's unplayable. We'll see. We'll see, but it is going to be the Copenhagen Wolves reacting very well. There's four members here closing in towards me. Makers. Macklin took a wrong turn. He's gone left, and that's going to give himself, make himself on a big, big target. But in limited, he didn't take grasping roots at level one. That yeah. would have been a kill. So Zyra's oftentimes get the Q at level one for the laning phase. But let this be a lesson. You should never skill up your ability until right before you use it. And at this game, in this game, because Unlimited did not skill his grasping roots on Zyra, it at the very least saved a flash on MYM. As you can see there, Kautard, he is no new person to uh, Ziggs. He went 3-0 and during the uh, play in the round robins. But at the moment, I'm looking at Kubon and Youngbook, and they are trading heavily there between the minions. But there's a hook, a hook coming in. They see the blade swinging through on Unlimited. But again, forgiven, not given an inch. And he manages to fend them back. Libic once again getting the damage down. But this is a tough, tough trade between these two. Once they bouncing blades get going from Makla, this could be mm -hmm. a tough lane. It's going to be very hard for Copenhagen Wolves to push this lane back against them. And I think it's very smart of MIM to get Libic back onto Thresh. In game one of this best of five, he landed so many clutch death sentences that really turned the game around for them and was probably the biggest reason that MYM won that first match. If he can make some hooks happen in the laning phase as well, he could keep forgiven down as well, which is super important. Charo doing work against Ziggs. He's not going to be any... Uh... He knows exactly what he's up against. The mines, though, being thrown behind him. But with that blue buff given across the Chari, it's something we didn't actually draw attention to, but he mm -hmm. picked up the blue buff right at the start. Yeah, Makate decided to sacrifice a little bit of his own farm and give that blue buff to Oriana. In the first two games, Charu definitely struggled early on. As Ziggs against what was a Kha'Zix, and now that he's against the Ziggs, especially with the blue buff on Oriana, he's kind of turning the tables with the aid of his jungler. And we have seen... The Meteor Maker's top lane, or duo laners, whatever you'd like to call them, shoving in against the Copenhagen Wolves. But you can see, in terms of farm, it is forgiven once again, keeping up there. Yeah, he's pretty good. And one thing that happens with Sivir when you're trying to shove in the lanes, every time you turn on your ricochet, you run the risk of getting minions too low and actually missing the last hits a little bit. So as he's shoving in, he's got to be very careful to keep his farm up. Youngbuck against Kobon, meanwhile, in this bottom lane. They've been pretty much bouncing, beating rubbing up against each other for uh, the duration of these two matches. And this time around, I'm not too sure who is going to come out on top. Youngbook is on the champion of choice. We'll see whether it plays into his favor. One of the big reasons Shivana started gaining popularity was to lane against Renekton. They're getting incredibly aggressive right now, but Shivana will outscale if Youngbook doesn't make something happen. Ignite goes in, and Youngbook flashes, spins, and picks up the kill, but we can see Makata coming around the side of him. Youngbook has minion wave to try and get away from this one. Is he going to try and slice and waste his way back out of this one? No, he's going to try and die to the towers, but yep. honestly, Makata's got a lot of time to land that kick. He's got flash two if he wants it, oh. but he threw it out too early. He might not be able to get this. Can he execute? Yes, he can. Very nicely played by Youngbook there. 
Just waited for that slice and dice to be ready and waiting. Youngbook using it at the exact right time to dodge that kick. Makade did not want to flash, and it cost him a kill. Well, meanwhile, at the top, it's going to be Makla. Has to use that barrier, but it's not going to be enough. Is it the tower? Shami should come in. It will. He manages to get a kill out of it. Libic now has that flay available in a moment. You see the plant coming out, trying to put the damage down. Tower hit. Does where gets to get traded, though. And amazing and forgiven. Last out this lane and push on Libic. And they got a lot of damage down onto Libic. They may consider trying to do another dive if he tries to stick around there in the top. Well, Makla no, they're back. did manage to get himself a kill as well from that one. So he got back. He got that Vampire Acceptor picked up. That's a hook. Actually, on Forgiven, he takes another tower hit. Another flash. Uh, sorry, uh, damage coming out from Libic. They're lashing on towards him. Maybe bringing fears of the AD carries uh, of the thresholds that we've seen. But Kaltard, he may well be the focus of Makata any minute. This could be a good gank if they execute properly. He does manage to put the mines down, slows down Makata. That's going to be the shockwave. Oh, he tried to jump out of it, tried to bomb himself away, but instead it could be Mac oh, Makla taking oh so low. Jet went down to 20 health. That was a cool interaction, for one, when he got pulled out of his Ziggs jump by the Orianna ult. Uh -oh. They strictly didn't have enough damage. He stuck around. He stuck around. He waited too long to back away. You don't back away in lane. You get the hell out of there. And this time, it was an easy, easy pickup for Amazing. It's the second big mistake Makade's made in a couple of minutes, and it's really hurting MYM's early game here. Copenhagen Wolves has incredibly strong early laners, and unless Makate can make something happen in those lanes with Lee Sin, they are going to lose these lanes. Well, we saw it in game one. When they lose those lanes, it does not go well, and so far, the Copenhagen Wolves are looking incredibly strong. The top lane was really where they were trying to swing it, but it's not happening for them, and Meteor Makers need to try and find something, try and turn this game back on its head. You can definitely see MYM is needing to pull something back. Knowing that they're on the red side of the map here for the remainder of the best of five, I'm wondering what their plan was, thinking they had a better shot with the second pick here. Yes, they were able to switch up the lineups, but unless they're able to execute with this jungle Lee Sin and all these new champions, it's not going to matter. Oh, we do see different builds coming out, of course. This time around, Forgiven is going to be going for that Trinity Force early on, like uh, Makla did not. He went for that Infinity uh -huh. Edge early on. I mean, like you said, this was the, the kind of the standard build there. Spell Shield being used on Makla to stop those Grasping Roots landing on him. Gives him that little bit of mana back. There's the blue buff going across towards Kaltard, and maybe we'll see some tr pushing back up towards his top lane because they are shield right against that tower. And this is the comfortable spot for Forgiven Unlimited to be in in that top lane. They love to push turrets with Caitlyn, and the Trinity Force is actually the item for Lucian to build if he wants to push turrets as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, down this bottom lane, we do see Lee Sin making his way around. It is Makata. He's taking away those golems, and look at Youngbook. He is very low. That's a target, a juicy target that's going to draw any attention to a jungler. He sees he's trying to draw him away, puts the ward into the tri-bush. Makata is ready and waiting. Next wave, he will go in for this. Renekton is a very scary man with his ultimate. Even though he looks low, right now. He's going to be able to cane 300 health when he pops his ultimate, and he still has Ignite up, so it's a dangerous dive if they consider it. It's a dangerous dive indeed, and we see Charu having to back out. Amazing is making the plays run once again here, and Kauta now coming around towards the red buff, throwing out the bombs. You can see the assault battery. Ooh. Mega Inferno bomb not going to quite land on towards it, but it may be enough damage anyway. Charu has to back out of this one. That's giving the red buff to Copenhagen Wolves. And Kautar just missed on that Mega Inferno bomb. He either had to use it earlier so it would land during the lockdown, or needed to wait for him to flash away, since Kautar was not going to be in range to use any other spells anyway. If he delayed, they may have gotten that. Kill. Meanwhile, of course, that drew the attention of Makala. He's had to go to the mid lane, so didn't go for that gank down the bottom. And again, the plays from Copenhagen Wolves all across the map are creating pressure mm -hmm. on Meteor Makers, and it's pressure that they don't seem to have any response to. The one thing that Makade did do is he was able to steal the red buff away. It just hasn't updated because he didn't kill the small creeps. It's still not enough as far as what he needs to do in this match, though. So that is going to be the blue buff going to Charu. He got it early on this time around, Makana again giving it to him, so that's actually going to hurt Makana, don't forget. He has managed to keep up the levels though, he's farming quite quickly, down the bottom again. Kuvon and Youngbuck just bouncing back and forward, keeping that damage going, keeping the burnout running. And Youngbuck though, he's all too familiar with this lineup, he's already got himself first blood down the bottom there, Ignite is back available, so we're going to have to keep our eye on that one as Amazing goes looking as well. Young Buck has really fought his way back. He hasn't even shopped since they were thinking about diving him. He's gotten Kuban all the way down. He is a giant spelt kind of up right now on the Shivana. So with Sharu coming down to the bottom lane, that's kind of required to prevent the dive going the other way. Yeah, and he's immediately had to speed himself up with that dissonance. He's ready and waiting. 
There's no ward coverage either, so Kubon has managed to uh, defend off the turret this time around, and I think they realized it. Obviously, they saw him leaving the mid lane, so they knew he was coming down that way. Uh -huh. But it means that Charo has to get back and defend that turret. We saw how quick Zeke can push the turret, but look at his top turret. Look how low it is already. And Lee Sin is trapped right now because the lanes of Copenhagen Wolves are so strong across the board. He wants to stop the top lane, and here's the gank they're trying. Here's the gank they're trying to go in there. It's not going to work out this time around. And a quick turnaround maybe coming back here. They could put the damage on towards Makla. He's in enough. The calling comes out. It is going to be unlimited that goes down, but the dragon was picked up by Copenhagen Wolves in the process. So one kill for a dragon. Copenhagen Wolves will take that any day. And they had to burn a lot to get that. That is MYM. It's one of the reasons Sivir is so popular right now competitively, not only for her lane pushing ability, but the ultimate assisting with the jungler ganks. The Lee Sin Q didn't even land, but they were able to run them down thanks to the immense move speed all of them had, and Unlimited just could not escape at the end of the day. And now we're seeing both mid laners returning to season two, picking up the race, taking those away. The jungler's giving those up. That's going to keep their farm going. And it's speaking of farm, you know, Charu had a bit of an advantage in the lane early on, but looking at it, you see again Kautard has been taking advantage of Charu trying to help out his lanes and starts to get a snake that edge in the farm. Yeah, just a little by little, but everyone on the Copenhagen Wolf side is ahead in farm right now. It's just that accumulated advantage. This is a little bit similar, even though the turrets are dying a lot more slowly, but it's a little bit similar to game two, where Copenhagen Wolves got little lane leads, was able to push down the turrets, and then MYM had no real answer. Watch out for the Vigank here on Sharu. There's no flash on Oriana. No flash on Oriana, but he has the shockwave, he has the exhaust, and with that stolen battery, this is going to be the first turret of the game going down. It's forgiven that closes that one out. Kubon, again, forced back to his tower. Oh, amazing. Surely going to take this one. Assault battery will come out. Shockwave available, but Mega Inferno Bomb pops out. There's no way of surviving this one. It was a clean kill, and Kautar took it. And that was as secure as secure gets for Amazing. He didn't even bother trying to Vault Breaker him. He just Flash Alted and then Vault Breakered him backwards with a short range, low damage Q. Well executed by Copenhagen Wolves. Nothing could really go wrong. And another tower because there's four members of Copenhagen Wolves. So you see Forgiven and Unlimited just rotating round down towards the mid lane, picking up that simple turret. And not a lot Meteor Makers can do about this one. And they are in danger of slipping out of this game. MYM is definitely out of sorts right now. They needed to either rotate down to the mid lane after giving up the top turret, or th that's just what they had to do. Because if they don't do that, they're going to lose both of them. They, <laughs> they just had to, damn it. <laughs> that's all it is. Young Buck, meanwhile, in this bottom lane, you can see the farm. He started to gain the advantage. He's starting to pick up, and he's baiting Kubon in. Hook, line, and sinker, and Liberty's going to come in. There's no assault and battery available this time, and he has to use his ultimate to back away from this one. Ooh, Young Buck getting get caught out by the kick. Is McCallum going to go aggressive? No, because Unlimited comes in, gets the strangle thorns down, and now Young Buck can turn this one around. Slice and dice it across. Will he get taken by the turret? Yes, he will. Kubon had to flash for it, though, but he does secure the kill. Trading a one for one is not actually the best thing that could happen there. Young Buck just got a little bit excited because he did so much damage when he started turning that one around on Renekton. And he's winning that lane mainly because he's just a little bit ahead of Kubon and items. The fact that it was a Sunfire Cape completed versus just a Giant's Belt meant he could bully Kubon up and down that lane. He just took a few too many turret shots, got a little bit over aggressive, and ended up trading a kill back. So wards from Libic being placed down this bottom lane and He's going to try and get himself and help out, but it is, you see Sibber, Magda's on that top lane, so pretty much the lane's starting to switch across, and this is where it started to go wrong before, and look at Unlimited, he's not afraid of Kubon, he will be once he sees Libic coming out there, he's got to be careful, he doesn't get any hook in there, there's Death Sensors winding it up, McCalla picking up that red buff meanwhile, and of course the mid lane, well, it is all free reign right now for Kautar, there's no response from Jaru. Yeah, and I think Copenhagen Wolves is going to be focusing on this bottom turret sooner rather than later. They like to take the three turrets in a row, like almost all teams do. This is very similar to how teams wanted to play last season. Not much has changed as far as this is concerned. Turrets still give a lot of gold. Oh, McKenna didn't even manage to get the smite steal in there. Uh, uh, amazing managed to take it away from him, but it was smite used. I think they wanted to give that one across the counter, but they secured it nonetheless. Libic realizing the danger swips away from this one, and the pressure back on towards the turret. And this is exactly what we thought. They have both... Well, they don't even have their AD carry. They just sent a support down because they think that Forgiven can farm all by himself until they send a fourth person. I don't think Copenhagen Wolves can secure this turret. 
So Youngboat is now supported. Oh, McCallum gets caught out. And as the Grasping roots on towards him, takes the lantern to back away. But Kautard is coming around. That Mega Inferno bomb is available if he needs it. You can see Kubon trying to measure him out there. But Youngboat goes in support of him. Puts down that bomb. He doesn't need to use it. Instead, he's going to put the damage down towards Kubon. Backs away. Mega Inferno bomb thrown in there. Lots of damage from the Copenhagen walls. Charu trying to come around the side. Does manage to get one kill. Has he got the second? Shockwave was used, but they do manage to disengage. And it was a one for one trade and it was a very awkward place for copenhagen wolves to fight they went through the turret and unlimited zara could not really get involved it just kind of showed how strong young bucks renekton is at this moment that they nearly came out of on top out on top of a 3v4 oh living may have bitten off more he can chew there slice and dice from young book though just backs away from it forgiven meanwhile picking up that super mini no he's not it was a whole bunch of damage just to take it away. He took all the damage, tanked it up. Mackler's grateful for the extra gold. Yeah, that was a really nice play by Mackler Sever right there. Might be starting to turn a little bit around on Forgiven. This isn't the game where Forgiven is one so far. Sever, two and oh, two and one with a bloodthirst completed already. Whereas Forgiven's a little bit misguided with his build right now, looking like he's going to be finishing a bloodthirster before his Trinity Force is completed. Might mean MOM has hope yet. And this has really all been from the time that Unlimited has left that lane. He's, he's left them to go one-on-one, -on -one, and so far, he seems to be working it back in his favor. Youngbook being taken low this time around by Kubon. Kubon has that Ignite available. Didn't go to use it, though, but to see, amazing clearing out, checking that Dragon, and it's Copenhagen Wolves that want to get themselves a second. It's actually a little curious right now that the top laners in this game are just both of the AD carries, and they're deciding... To they're the ones that wanted the free farm. It's giving us a different type of 4v4. It's a different 4v4, but Makata has to take that lantern. They're switching back around. Kubon is all in his own here. He may have gone a little bit too deep. We see Youngbuck coming from down the bottom of the river, so Copenhagen Wolves are collapsing in on this one. And Youngbuck only has a couple seconds left on that Renekton ultimate, so he's going to be able to tap that turret to finish it off and then make it into a fight if it happens and have his Renekton ultimate back up. Libic with that blue buff, by the way. He does manage to force Youngbuck to back away from this one, but Amazing's closing in. Is he going to slam down onto someone? Yes, he will be. Libic may well be the target. You can see they're coming in there, but that was a good play. So Salt Patrick comes in. Mega Inferno Bomb. That's going to get flashed out of by all members of the team and Meteor Makers back out successfully. Couple of ultimates used for a lot of health and the blue buff, or sorry, and uh, the flash of Thresh right there. Now the AD carries have converged on the bottom lane, but Forgiven kind of beat Sivir to the spot. We'll see if Copenhagen Wolves rushes this dragon down. There's the fight. The hook on Kautan is it going to be enough. Libic goes in, a face checks it effectively. The dragon already going down, and Meteor Makers coming in a little late on this one. Off to the side, and Forgiven doing a good job of keeping them well engaged, disengaged. McCallus trying to chase away from this one, tries to safeguard onto a minion. He's not really going to get away, and Copenhagen Wolves are chasing Meteor Makers all across the map here. They're going to lock them down. There's the bomb from Kautan, finds one. Now we're waiting. The shockwave from Dragon. Charu just off of the side will manage to catch on. Gubon's taken so, so oh. low. Youngbuck, will he go for it? Forgiven gets himself a kill. Flash comes out, and Youngbuck, well, he's not giving up. He's continuing to chase. Make sure he forces him away, and that will buy them the turret. So they got the dragon and an extra kill out of that fight. So it is a win for Copenhagen Wolves, but man, was that ever a scattered fight. Well, Youngbuck gets pulled in towards the tower, but that inner turret is going down. Meanwhile, you see Ch uh, Sharu, he's continuing to push the mid lane, but I'm not sure he's going to get it. It will be Copenhagen Wolves that pick themselves up the fourth turret of the game, while Charu, he's trying to get the second. And he's probably going to be able to get this one with Orianna. It's a nice consolation prize, since MYM will get a little bit of their map pressure back overall. But that's just a really scary fight for MYM once again. They got forced on a dragon, Ooh. and then even though they got engaged on later, it was trouble. And I don't see a way Sharu gets out of this. Sharu, he's got the help just at the top of Kubon, but Kubon is now closing the gap. Youngbuck's going to come in. He may well be able to slice across. No, oh. he does manage to escape it. And really the pressure, I think, just of the, the escape and the, the speed of the dissonance helped him out. Yeah, I thought Amazing's assault and battery was up on Vi there, but it was just about to tick the cooldown. So it was nicely played by Sharu there to use the move speed on Orianna and just slide on out of that one. So really a very nice job of him taking out the turret and escaping, plus burning a lot of time from Vi on the chase down. Well, down the bottom lane there, continuing to push. Meteor Makers really want to get this bottom turret, trying to pull things a little bit closer in terms of gold, but you can see already getting bullied away from this one. Oh, the death sentence is being thrown out, not finding its target though. Unlimited and forgiven, successfully defend. 
And Mackler, that's how fast Siver pushes the waves. Yeah. Really, really fast. It's going to slow down Copenhagen Wolves' fast push strategy that they used in that game, too, for such success and had that quick victory coming through. Forgiven, wow, Lucian will be strong in team fights. Siver's no slouch at this point. Mackler having a much better AD carry game than he had in either games one or two. So. Build-wise, we see the Trinity Force and Bloodthuster will be coming out shortly from Forgiven. So very different to what we saw Mackler building last time around, but almost the standard, I guess you could say, for the Lucians. Meanwhile, Bloodthuster and Last Whisper coming out from Mackler, so he's going to be looking for possibly more damage in the next item, or he could go attack speed. Yeah, and this is what should be the standard build for Sivir as well, because the Boomerang Blade is such an immense amount of damage for her. And Sivir is more of a kind of hit and run, kite back and forth type AD carry with the move speeds. You get your ricochet off, throw a Q, and then maybe dance around for a while. And that works best when you have the maximum amount of AD and the maximum amount of armor penetration. So you're actually suggesting that players use dance command. <laughs> yeah, just dance around between after you throw your Q. You don't need to do slash anything. Dance, slash dance, just sit there for a little bit. That updated model. <laughs> we'll see whether that's what Mackler does. I'm not too sure that's the way it would go. Instead, they're trying to make a pick, trying to make a play, and it was Kaltar they were focusing on. Meal Makers, they are grouping together. They want to keep on pushing these turrets. It's 4-2 currently against them, but they are gathered for the mid lane, but Leungbuck, while well, he's already making his way down. And they're down about 5,000 gold, so Meet Your Makers would have to catch a very fortunate fight. Probably need one or two extra people in order to have it go their way. And when they were pushed up that far, they kind of quickly decided it was a bad idea. Copenhagen Wolves pushing five back the other direction. The massaging coming out from Forgiven. Libic just stretching and flexing his giant shoulders and taking that ulti completely. And, well, it stripped him down to half health. Yeah, that was, you know, kind of a defense. It's surprising that MOM only had three people there, but since the minion wave did not arrive in the middle lane, Copenhagen Wolves could not convert on any type of real turret push. So we have a little bit of a slow period in the game. Obviously, Copenhagen Wolves just trying to cement their position. Not quite as dominant as they were before, but it's still a 5,000 gold advantage. And overall, item-wise, that gives them a huge leap in this game. And Dragon going to be up in around a minute 30. I think that may be the time. Do you think Meal Makers are even going to contend it, though? It's a really tough call at this point. Just knowing that Meteor Makers with the Orianna does want to catch them in the dragon, but the corridors that they would have to walk through are probably just too dangerous because Unlimited, there goes his exalt, Unlimited on Zyra can cut off so much of that dragon approach area that it makes the fight extremely difficult for MOM to come in. I feel like M Copenhagen Wolves just has a lot of control right now. They're going to want to take that dragon on cooldown. If MOM comes, they will fight them because they think they can win. But aside from that, Copenhagen Wolves just wants to keep pushing up these lanes, try to outpace Sivir a little bit as far as lane pushing goes, and then continue to take turrets like they did in game two. Lyric putting the ward down. He's going to get spotted out by the ward of the Copenhagen Wolves. They are just backing off. Unlimited was actually going looking for that farm, but the Ziggs bomb uh, stole it away from him. The supports yeah. never really get any love, despite the fact they're getting a lot more gold this time around. Interesting yeah. to note, both supports actually went for those boots of mobility, and both junglers as well, Mechanic and in court trying to take down that ward instead. We see the, uh, the side stone, uh, the god damn, I can never remember the name of the new one. The Talisman <laughs> of Ascension? No, don't be the down. Ruby the Ruby The Greater Lens. lens. The Greater Lens. So actually, Greater Lens means he has Greater... Well, it's, it's the free upgrade, isn't it? Level 9. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. If they spend the 475 gold, it upgrades it once again. And this is actually MIM trying to take the dragon with the timer, and Copenhagen Wolves is more concerned with turrets. MOM is going to have to peel off this one. Yeah, I don't think Jaru is going to get away. Assault Battery almost certainly will not. Ooh. And the Mega Inferno Bomb. I think Overkill could be used there, maybe. Kautar trying to get away. This time they're coming around the backside. They do get the tower down. Kautar's going to be the focus target. You see Kubon going in. He does manage to get the one down, but how much of a detriment, though? Because Meteor Maker's in all sorts of trouble. They are completely split up on this one. Libic is going to go down. Who will be the victor? It will be amazing picking up the kill. Only because he used his flash to get yeah. that one off. And you could say they threw the kitchen sink at Shara right there at the start of that fight. But then afterwards, it was a bit of an overcommit by MIM trying to fight because they were so far behind. But since they'd went for the dragon and Copenhagen Wolves had positioned themselves so well, they got the fight they were looking for, and it gives them so many rewards. And the inhibitor will go down. I don't think there's going to be much that can stop them. We see Makata. Oh, he's caught with the grasping roots. They might turn on him here. 
Instead, Charu is going to chase him towards it. Siva's ultimate is not available because it was used in the last fight, so they can't even pursue. Yeah, it just kind of goes to show how far MYM was out of position, that even with the incredible move speed that Sivir Alt grants, they still couldn't make it in range to have a timely fight and protect Sharu. Dragon is still a point of contention, though, right now. There was just almost everything used in the fight, but Zig's ultimate is back up. Forgiven's Culling is back up if they want to fight it, and MYM has to rush this down. They're going to try and rush it. You see Amazing Kid taking a peek there. They're going to go, the Mega Inferno Bomb comes in, but it's just a little too late. Smite it down. By McKenna. I'm rather surprised actually Copenhagen Wolves didn't decide to contest. contend with that dragon yeah. or contest it. Not only because dragon gives so much gold at this stage in the game, also because since MOM was behind in the game, in experience, they get experience back for this. But let's take another look at this fight. You could see Sharu was dead before the fight started, and the things that were down were the Ziggs ultimate, the Lucian ultimate, and a whole bunch else. But you can't forget that it's a 4v5. And Couchard had already used most of his spells, so why is MYM diving him so heavily? It ended up kind of finishing off Kuban as he went through in Shivana, and the rest of Copenhagen Wolves could just dive in through the end of it. They no longer had the Sivir move speed for the retreat since they used it to get in, and it meant they could get that third kill. Yeah, it was a secure, but meanwhile, Meteor me, Makers, they are starting to keep pressure on the bottom turret. They managed to get it down, so it's now 6-3 in turrets. They have managed to get that bottom mm -hmm. turret down, but it's me or Makers trying to create a play when really Copenhagen Wolves are completely backed off. Yeah, and you don't have the luxury of forcing the right spots in the game when you're down by this much gold. They do have the move speed advantage, though with the Sivir and the Orianna, it's so many ways to speed up the team. I'm actually a little surprised that Libic hasn't tried to complete his No Man's Medallion into that Talisman of Ascension to give them yet another speed boost. I think it's just a matter of him being a little bit gold-starved. Um, he has been trying to make those plays, but honestly, there's not been a great deal of follow-up for Meteor Makers, which is why he throws out the hook. Oh, look out! Lands it on. That's a good shockwave, though. They're going to try and chase back into his that immediately. Kubon gets blown backwards. They dodge out away the Mega Inferno Bomb. Can they chase? Makata is very, very deep on this one. And now we have four members chasing behind with one in front. It is, though, Youngbook going big, trying to get the kill onto Libic, and Libic goes down! Youngbook going huge! And while the shockwave started things off, it was Youngbook's Crocodile that closed it out, and amazing, he's going to get himself another on Makata. And that is why Renekton is Youngbook's favorite champion. He just went man mode there, and MOM's in even more trouble. Kubon looking and trying to get out of this one, but it's not going to happen. Slice and Dice comes across, but it was Unlimited that picked up the kill. Hey, supports need some love too. Four kills now on Desira, and oh my, this game definitely just turned <laughs> in a different direction. We need to sit down a little bit. There's, there's a we'll there's fair warning for that one, I feel, yeah. but uh, nevertheless, yeah. as you can see, I like to stand up and cast, and it is goddamn warm it's in this room right way. now. It's yeah. easier to stand up it and is, cast. It, it is a little easier, so... Uh, a little bit more. Yeah. Right, please. There's going to be a gif of that on the internet right now. I Were feel. you really shocked? You just throw yeah, I was second. shocked. I was that shocked. So I was just, I was just back down. Yeah. So what do we make of the yeah. game so far? We can see it mm -hmm. uh, on the screens to the sides here. Uh, obviously, big advantage. 15, 6 to kill, 6-3 yeah. in turrets. And the inhibitor, well, it's about to be the second one going down. Yeah, and that last fight for Copenhagen Wolves may have just swung the game around because they got so much power from Young Buck, basically just trying to take on four people at once that the fight just split up and everyone on Copenhagen Wolves was free to do as much damage as possible. As far as the overall state of the game goes, 8,000 gold, nine kills, and again, only 27 minutes into the game. You really have to hand it to Copenhagen Wolves coming back with the strong win in game two after defeat and a really strong Kai chance at a win here in game three. Amazing, amazing stuff. So, Copenhagen Wolves, could they take this to 2 1? That is the question. Or will Meteor Makers pull off really pretty much uh, an impossible task, I feel, right now? So, if we think back to not even too long ago, the promotion tournament for the summer split season three mm -hmm. of the LCS, MYM has had their backs to the wall and made it in. They were playing against the Dragonborns to get into the LCS in the first place, and they actually lost the first two games of that series and then won three in a row. Well, right now we do see the crowd here. This is the new studios, by the way, and uh, here in Cologne. We are in our brand new location. There's a lot of players. The players have all got themselves uh, rooms 
So, which is something mm -hmm. something they've really never experienced. Literally, every team will have their own room for yeah, the LCS in the studio. In the well. studio, yeah, so where they can all five PCs, they can all practice at once. And right now, we are just waiting for. It was a machine that died, by the way. That's which is why we are in this mm -hmm. poor situation. Which is why we are seeing these players get themselves prepared and again trying to keep their hands dry, keep their hands warm, get themselves prepared for the inevitable loss that is coming to meet your maker's way. Well, that's calling it. Only in this Nothing game. Nothing to see here, guys. Come only, on. In, <laughs> only in this game. Really, I mean, it, it okay. does seem rather grim. Two inhibitors down. Well, they're going to be two inhibitors down. Yeah. Is a very difficult task. And statistically, mm -hmm. teams don't generally come back from that. No, definitely not. But this is a new season, D-Man. Well, We're in yes. the 2014 season. Yes. Right? Now, I, foolish of me. I, I agree with you right now. Copenhagen Wolves has been dominating this one. Meet your makers. Even though they're not allowed to talk during a pause, they mm. need to be thinking mentally about game four. And that's what really needs to be on their mind right now, is how to turn things around. And that game sound tells you that we are back underway. And that inhibitor, as I mentioned, is going down. Second one is dropped. So, as it stands right now, Meteor Makers are up against the impossible task. And the Copenhagen Wolves are just going to back away and buy themselves a mountain of items because they picked up a lot of kills along the way as well as a lot of items yeah they are extremely farmed after this one especially when they go back and buy all that there's thousands of gold on every member right now probably if you would have added it up it would have been seven or eight thousand unspent gold that they're now going to be able to convert on baron is a big opportunity for them now but since they have seven turrets down they may not even need to. I think it's the safe call for them to ward up the jungle a little bit, make sure that Lee Sin isn't in the position to steal it away, and then just secure a Baron before pushing the third inhibitor of the match. Well, I mean, Magda this time around on Siva has kept up, and he's actually ahead in farm. It's the first mm -hmm. time in, in the three games that we've had so far that he's actually kept ahead of Forgiven, because Forgiven was light years ahead of him. Even in the game that they lost, he had like nearly 500 plus CS. But this mm -hmm. time around, he has kept in it, but unfortunately the rest of his team are not on the same page. Yeah, Young Buck has had his best game of the series yeah, by far. By far, yeah. Right now. And, you know, Renekton, it's a thing that he likes to play. He makes no secret of it, and when you let him have it, he will just do well. That's what he does time and time again. And the threat the Copenhagen Wolves presented to MYM, making MYM ban the other champions that they did this match, has really just opened up another strategy for Copenhagen Wolves to execute with. Well, Copenhagen Wolves are making the run through, and actually, Mio Maker's a little out of position here, quickly evacuating the jungle, realizing that Copenhagen Wolves are shoving their way back in there. The inhibitor has respawned in the middle, which is why you see the Wolves running through that mid lane. And Trying to force their way into this one. Meal makers are going to have a tough job defending. They pulled the shockwave out nonetheless, though. And immediately, Zonya's hourglass pulled by Charu. Is it going to be too soon? You can see the strangle thorns and the bomb thrown out, but they are putting a lot of damage down. But it's just not enough. Forgiven ticking that ignite is not going to take him down. And Makata having to use the wolves to get away. That seemed like a really good start to the fight by MOM, and it just keeps going. It just keeps going. Amazing takes down. Libic, Libic has to back away. Charu and Makla running for their lives right now, but there is a giant crocodile once again chasing through. That will be the inhibitor finally secured by the Copenhagen Wolves. And you could really see, even though Forgiven got taken low by Sharu, the fact that both Kubon and Makate diving through couldn't finish off a single person meant that was a lost fight for MYM. When they cannot dive through and finish off the Lucian, who does not even have defensive items, you're in a lot of trouble as a team. And that was, that was, that was a full dive as well. Makate and Kubon both went for it, and they just couldn't take him down because... A, he could kite them around. B, he had barrier available. And of course, the support, of course, the, the, the locket there was on him as well. So everything was used to save Forgiven. And there's just not enough damage coming out from that top laner in jungle. And it is also a really key moment in the game to get the second inhibitor down for a decent duration. When you only have one inhibitor down, since it no longer buffs up the minions in the side lane like it did in Season 3, it means that it is now an actual difficult task for the team to defend against. If it was just one, MOM could push that up very easily with Mackler and then just go back about their business as five people. But since there's two down right now, it means Copenhagen Wolves gets to dictate entirely where to go and how the game is going to play out from this point forward. Well, amazing sneaking around, Copenhagen Wolves. Well, oh, Meteor Makers, they really wanted to make a play. They really wanted to make a pick, but realizing He's not on his own. We're going to have to back from this one. And this is the inner turret that's going to get pressured. And 
I still don't see Meteor Makers able to defend this one. Charu is not there. It's only three members of Meteor Makers in the game. They have to back off. Yeah, and it's because they actually had two people defending the mid lane. Oriana and Lee Sin. Not a wise distribution of their resources there by MYM, but there's not much they can actually do. Even if they had four people there, they would have lost that turret. Oh, and that's going to be the Baron being picked up by Copenhagen Wolves. Meal Makers have got no answer for this one. Can't come close, can't come anywhere near it. That means the Copenhagen Wolves are a long way into setting up game two. Yeah, I think mines need to be on... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. He's dead. Yep. That's this Makata. Oh! Whoa! The lantern escape. The calling comes through. Libic. Oh, the bomb! The Mega Inferno bomb says, No, Lee Sin, you shall not escape despite being an overpowered champion. <laughs> oh, come on now. He's just rather <laughs> mobile, D-Man. Let's give it to him. But not mobile enough because Ziggs, he's got more range than that. You can't lantern away from a Mega Inferno bomb. I did not say that properly. But Copenhagen Wolves is super far ahead right now. Two inhibitors down, five people with the Baron buff, crushing down that turret. I'm just waiting for Jinx to be in the same team, and then we've got super everything going on. There's, there's all sorts of crazy names coming out for these. These Oh, Shockwave getting pulled. It's not going to be enough, though. Kautad again jumps himself away from it. And again, this time, Charu not able to pick up a kill. Makata couldn't even get close to this one. The Kubon, sorry, couldn't get even in that fight. And this is surely Copenhagen Wolves closing out the game. Nexus turret is taking damage. It is forgiven, just slowly poking it down. And Super Minions coming up that mid lane will help them out. Of course, the Baron buff regen does mean they're going to rotate around towards this bottom inhibitor. And surely, but slowly but surely, they will take him down. The bomb, look at that, the cooldown's already off it. He's managed to get so much blue buff, the cooldown of defense, he's just dropping them down. And well, Meteor Makers, they did get Youngbug down. Is this going to be a turnaround? This is a really ugly fight by Copenhagen Wolves. They overstayed their welcome and might be getting chased down here by Mackler. They're going to try their best. Mackler's going to get sped up, does catch on, but immediately they turn back around and they get back on him. He gets a kill, but at what effect? You can see Forgiven, he dives on. He might get two. He's on to Charu. He's going to get the speed up there. Charu just pulls the defensive ball, got the shockwave. Kubon jumps around the backside. Have they gone too deep again? The support comes in. He goes on to the fountain. No, you can't do that. You can't kill them on the fountain like that. That's actually no. an ace for Meet Your Makers. That is about as sloppy as Copenhagen Wolves could have gotten right there. And yes, they cleared three inhibitors, but since they're all dead, MYM will be able to keep these minions back. That's about the only thing Copenhagen Wolves could have done to keep this game close whatsoever. We just thought we'd say hi in the darkness. Nocturne was around the studio, so uh, we quickly got a glimpse of that one. But uh, as it is, Meal Makers. Well, they're not down and out just yet. They managed to get themselves in it. The Baron is not available, of course, because they had that buff Copenhagen Wolves. And that's probably what baited themselves into staying too long. Yeah, they had mentally checked out of the game. Once they got the three inhibitors down, they're just like, all right, we completely win. Kautard was the first one to go down in that catch, and it just got worse from there. They completely overstayed. Honestly, this... That was a very big mistake made by Copenhagen Wolves. And while they are still in the driver's seat for this game, things like that are what lose you games. Well, we'll see how much of an effect it has on them because, you know, Meal Makers, they, they got a good chunk of gold from that one. They, they closed out a lot of kill scores. They got a lot of bonus gold, a lot of bounties were picked up. But, you know, when the support player can solo the dragon, that's generally triggering a time where the game is close to ending because look at the items Limited has picked up now. He's got a Leandris, he's got a needlessly large rod. He's becoming a mid laner. Yeah, he's burning that dragon down pretty darn well. And Libic has not accumulated the same level of items. I mean, if you just look at the gold across the supports, it's actually a 2,400 lead just from Unlimited alone. A lot of that has to do with the assist bonus gold he's been able to get. It's one of the other new features we have uh, in the 2014 season. We can't talk about that right now, though, because Copenhagen Wolves wants to make up for that mistake they just made. Well, Mikael's Crucible just got picked up by Libic. We'll see whether effects it has in this next fight. He was waiting around. He wanted to get the item, and instead he had to plump for that one. He was saving that gold, and instead they do defend the inhibitor for now. 
for now. They have two side lanes that are going to be spawning super minions on them. Mackler can clear those waves very, very quickly when they do arrive there, as well as Kuban, and still make it relatively quickly. This is a very contentious inhibitor that MYM has to hold if they want to think about a comeback. Charu, oh, the shockwave whips. That means they're going to trigger straight in there. Charu was the target. Libix trying to run away from this one, but everybody from Meteor Makers has to be backing away from this now. Kuban getting ready, tries to jump in there, tries to close the gap. It's Jungbook, they're going to single out. Stranglethorn comes in. Mega Inferno Bomb lands on Charu. For Kuban taking so low, but look at Leongbuk. He is a monster right now. That will be the kill being picked up by Kautan. He closes in. There's another one. That's going to be the Nexus to his cone. That is a triple kill for Kautan. And of course, it is going to be the Copenhagen Wolves that will finally close out the game. We've seen it a couple times. Shockwaves decide games occasionally, whether they hit five or in that case, zero. That was not the best ending for Meteor Makers. Copenhagen Wolves took their time a little bit to finish that game. You can see they're laughing it off, how the ace inside of MYM's base wasn't the cleanest way to win, but they'll take it because they have one more game until they're in the LCS. One game away from victory, one game away from getting themselves a salaried players. Young Buck, you see there with his pistols. Will they allow Red Ecton through again? I very much doubt it. McKenna there, the captain of Meteor Makers, trying to discuss what just went wrong in that game. And you can see, really, they're thinking, picks and bans. Not so sure what Libyx doing, they're just poking him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm it. helping him with support. Fix, fix it. it. <laughs> yeah. fix, fix it, Jack. Fix. Yeah. I think it's kind of panic time for Meteor Makers mm. right now because they're on the same side of the map again two more times in a row. This last game was a big dramatic shift from the first two. So they've already kind of tried strategy number two. It didn't work any better than the first one, and they have to change it up again. But I don't know if they have that in their arsenal uh, right and, now. And what do we make of the Renekton? Because that was clearly a defining character, Young Book there. Mm -hmm. Much better game. Yeah. They didn't ban it out. It wasn't first pick, because Lucian was. But mm -hmm. it got through to third pick for Copenhagen Wolves. Should meet your makers have taken it away. They knew they were letting it through. Did they think, is it that big of a deal? Because it clearly seems to be. Well, the thing is, not many people actually get to play against Young Bucks Renekton mm. because it gets banned so frequently. Yes. And if you think how the matchup has been progressing between Renekton and Shivana, normally the Shivana outscales in the late game because she can hold even with Renekton. It just didn't hold even with Renekton with Youngbook right there. I don't think they can let that happen again, but that means they have to let through the other multitude of things that they'd already been trying to ban away. Well, Sivir, of course, was picked up, and that seemed to work well. This is the first game that actually Macklus kept up in terms of CS mm -hmm. with... The uh, Sivir was strong. Forgiven. The Sivir was mm -hmm. very strong like there for Mackler. He did a quite admirable job, A, keeping up in farm, but B, just not losing the lane to Forgiven and Unlimited, who have been winning the lane in the previous games. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to...